Hey guys, uh, as always, thanks for being part of a life group here at Vaughn Forest. Uh, we're wrapping up our series, When Love Came to Town, for life groups. Obviously, we'll be continuing this series throughout the rest of our Christmas messages. Uh, but as life groups wind down, thank you guys for choosing to be a part of a life group this semester. Of course, we're going to be kicking off signups for life groups, so make sure uh, that you sign up. And people might go, well, I'm already part of a group. Well, you can sign up for that group again, or you can sign up for a different group. But we want to have three semesters throughout the year to give new people uh, a runway to get involved. And so it's about starting new groups. It's about getting new people involved. We have a method behind our madness. You got to trust us, okay? So make sure that you're aware of that. It's going to be coming up uh, at the end of the year, first of the year. It's going to be an incredible thing. We're, we're praying and hoping that more people will even be part of a group and that we'll even see more groups started in 2017. But thank you for being part of a group this year, uh, this fall. I hope it's been a huge blessing in your life. Now, as we uh, get into this next session, as we're talking about when love came to town, uh, I want to talk to you about the fact that love came to town so that we could live life to the full. You see, a lot of times we live in this world, especially in the South, uh, we love the idea that Jesus came so that we could go to heaven, right? Uh, but you do realize that Jesus came so that you could go to heaven, but Jesus left you here on earth so that you could live life for Him. And the life that He invites us into is a life of purpose and meaning, and it's powerful, and it's the life to the full that He describes in John 10, 9 and 10. I want to read these verses to you. Uh, Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. It's pretty straight up there. I mean, like, I'm the way in. This is it. Mm -hmm. He's also said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Just a little side point. There is no other way to God except through Jesus Christ, Him alone. Uh, he says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. That means I'm going to provide for him. I'm going to fulfill all of his needs. And then he says in verse 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. So Jesus shows that you've got Satan and his, this is his agenda. I have a totally different agenda. And it is good. It is life-giving. It is full. And it is to invite you into this relationship so that you could experience life to the full. That's the life that Jesus has called us to. You see, love came to town so that we could live life to the full. And so often we miss that. And I think that there's a lot of people that are gonna get to the end of this life and realize that they never truly tapped into the life that God invited them into. Right. And if there's one thing that I care about, uh, other than obviously seeing people come into relationship with Jesus Christ. That's primo. That's number one. But number two is to see people begin to experience this life to the full, to begin to live out their faith, not to just be churchgoers, not to just be good people in the community, but to truly have their hearts set on fire for Jesus and to truly begin to live the life to the full, making the greatest impact in their life. Because here's the deal. God left us here for a reason. If God just wanted to save us and send us to heaven, he would have done that. But there's some reason, Kenny, that God saved you and left you here. There's a reason, Chad, that God saved you and didn't go ahead and take you, but he left you here. And he left you here for a purpose. And that purpose is to be a part of his mission. And that is where life to the full is experienced. Uh, Kenny, how have you seen since becoming a Christ follower that choosing life, choosing God's story, choosing to, to be a part of what God is doing is so much more life-giving and life to the full than just doing your own thing. You know, you know coming to, to Christ later in life, I say later in life as, as a college student, um, you know, I live in the South. And so I always heard, like, this is what it means to be a Christian. And, and unfortunately, most of what I heard was, was following a bunch of rules. And so uh, really, as a college student who's chasing after everything the world had to offer, when I finally realized what it meant to live life to the full, it was freeing for me. Like, it was, it was, a, it was a, really a thing of joy to know that, that I wasn't uh, 
held down or strapped down by this list of rules, but the reality is Christ came and set us free so that we could live in, in, in freedom. Um, you know, in serving in student ministry so often, like you say, the first thing, the most, the most thing we have to be thankful for is, is, uh, is, is life, a new life. But I think oftentimes when I see a student that's been church and church and church and have gone through the motions of, of checking the box and doing this and doing that, but when you see a student uh, who's been in church their whole life, when they finally get it, when they begin living out their faith, really, man, that's the thing that really drives me because you begin to see that there's so much joy in serving Christ. There's so much joy in denying self because we see the greater, the greater thing, and that's that's His kingdom. And so, uh, for me, I think the, the greatest thing is seeing um, people move beyond, from beyond the mundane to really see that there's so much freedom in life when they're when you truly serve Christ for for who He is. Yeah. Well, Chad, you and I have had many conversations about. As Vaughn Force, we intentionally try to cultivate an attractive mm. environment mm. so that people can come in, learn, and hear about Jesus. How much does the people, the people watching this video, us, all the other people that make up Vaughn Forest, how much does them living life to the full have an impact on us being an attractive community for people to want to be a part of? <clears throat> I think it's huge. I mean, you know, living life to the full, like what you're talking about, living for Jesus, it's what we were created for. And when folks come and they see, you know, folks who maybe don't fully understand yet that haven't chosen to follow Christ, when they see us, when they see us excited, mm -hmm. doing what God created us to do, engaged, you know, going after, genuinely caring and reaching out for those who are far from Christ, that's attractive, man. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think, I think people see that and they think, I want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And again, there's, the, the truth is we were all created for that. And so when, when you see that thing that you were created for that tugs at your heart, that pulls at you, it, it makes you want to be a part of it. Yeah. Some, something you guys both hit on was this idea of identity. Um, it's what we were created for. Mm -hmm. Man, I just, oh, I wish I could come across the screen and just help people and shake them and say, man, you're missing out on what you were created for mm -hmm. when you don't choose the life that Jesus offers. I get it, you're saved, you said the prayer, you did the thing, but are you truly surrendering yourself to Jesus Christ? See, a lot of people when they hear this idea of Jesus calls us daily to deny ourselves and follow him, surrender to him, they, they think that's bad or that's some kind of uh, uh, scary thing, but no, 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 you're missing it. That's where life is found. Yeah. It's what I said a couple weeks ago that, I believe generosity is the key that so many people have but yet are not willing to unlock that it unlocks so many of God's blessings. Mm. I truly believe that this idea of daily denying ourselves, stepping across that line of saying, God, I am yours. I trust you. I want to be used by you is that key that all of us are holding as Christ followers, but yet we're not willing to unlock that door that opens up so much of what God wants to do in and through our lives. Uh, what are times where you guys have seen uh, in your own life where maybe you got caught up in your own thing and you weren't willing uh, to truly, you know, daily deny yourself and follow Jesus and experience that life to the full? I know there was a time for me where you know, kind of in college, I slacked off on, you know, spending time with Jesus. And I know there's, all, there's always times where we miss a day or miss, miss a couple of days. It is what it is. But I kind of entered into a season of not mm -hmm. spending that time with, with God each day. And, and it's, it's, it, my life got tougher. Mm -hmm. And then once, you know, you, you, hit, you hit the nail on the head there, you know, people so often think of surrender and, and obedience and submission as these bad things. But but man, that's, that's where true life begins. That's, it's all about that. And so it's, it's spending the time with Jesus. It's, it's obeying. It's, it's finding that unique thing that God has created for you to do and live it out. Like I know for me as, as a creative pastor here, when I'm sitting back in the sound booth on a Sunday morning and the hands grow up, go up and the, and the worship happens and it all comes together and people say, man, that was awesome. It's not about anything that we've done. It's about God's spirit showing up. But that's, that's, what I feel, that's when I feel the most alive. That's when I'm like, oh, yes, you know, you, you want to blow confetti. I mean, this was it, man. And, uh, and so, and I think, I think for all of us, God has created, you know, maybe it's, you know, some folks are great at construction. Maybe it's when all that comes together. Some folks are great at meeting people and, and talking with them. Maybe that's it. But whatever that unique place that God has created for you, your identity, like you're saying, when you find that, 
I think, man, there's just, there, there's no more feeling of alive than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I totally get that. And, um, you know, as we move into a new year, there's always new opportunities for people to serve Jesus. Yeah. And I think serving is one of those, one of the most incredible things that we get the opportunity to do. I mean, the fact that God invites us into his family, like we talked about uh, last week, and then this week, the fact that God has, has come so that we could live life to the full. It's this incredible thing that God allows us to be a part of what he's doing and to serve him. And I think that's so critical in us living life to the full. You know, repentance, as you named off words, those are good words. Those are good things that bring freedom. Uh, Man, as you guys continue this conversation uh, in your groups, you're going to be talking about three things that that we can do uh, on a consistent rhythm where we can really live life to the full and experience this. Uh, And so, man, we just want to encourage you uh, and encourage ourselves and challenge ourselves uh, to be to be men and and women who truly embrace the life that Jesus offers and to truly experience the life to the full. Uh, because we at Vaughn Forest want to build lives that honor God, and we truly believe uh, that the life that honors God the most is the life that's lived to the full. Mm. Uh, that's a life of worship and surrender and sacrifice and uh, service and uh, being in community, you know, I could go on and on. And so that, that's what we're doing here. And so, man, thank you guys so much. I hope you have an incredible discussion in your group as you continue to talk about the fact that love came to town so we could live life to the full.